Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very, very imaginary exponential equation. Why do I call it very imaginary? Because of the base. The base is 2i. What is i? i is the square root of negative 1. But negative 1 has two square roots. Anyways, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I also have another channel called Cyber Math which focuses on algebra, number theory, and trigonometry mainly. A little bit of geometry here and there. Cyber with an S. And if you have any questions about complex numbers, you always ask, because that's how you learn. So, how do we solve a problem like this? Can't we just ln both sides or natural log both sides? Sure, why not, right? Let's go ahead and do that, because that's typically what's done when the variable is in the exponent. So, properties of exponents, you can bring this to the front, so that should give us z times ln 2i equals ln 4. And then z should be ln 4 divided by ln 2i. The million dollar question is, what is ln 2i? How do you log a complex number, let alone a negative number, right? I mean, can we naturally log a negative number? Absolutely. You can even do with complex numbers. But how do you do that? That's the million dollar question. So... Before we answer that question, I'm going to show you the normal, more standard, rigorous method that is used with complex exponentiation. I know somebody is going to come up and say, you're doing it wrong and this is not rigorous and so on and so forth, but that's okay. Yes, I'm not that rigorous. I'm just learning new things, okay? So we have 2i to the z equals 4. 2i to the z equals 4. And here's what we're going to do. Whenever you have something to something else, you can write it as e to the power z ln w. So basically, two things we need to talk about. The complex exponentiation, when you have a complex number to a complex power, you can write it as an exponential using e as a base, right? The exponential function, exp. And then we have to deal with the log of a complex number. So what is ln w? ln w is defined as ln absolute value of w plus i times the argument of w. Argument is the angle or the argument, right? This is the angle. So whenever you plot a complex number, it makes an angle with the x-axis or we call that the real axis. And this is the imaginary. And of course, it's distance from zero is called the modulus or r. So that's what we need to do here. Let's go ahead and do that and see where that takes us. For the natural log of a complex number, I'm gonna deal with that after I do the exponentiation stuff, okay? And then we're gonna go back to this, hopefully if I don't forget, and check if this is gonna give us the answer more directly. Even though some people may not like the, the rigorousness level or the level of rigor, okay? That's a big word. You have to be rigorous. Okay, we're not doing a college paper. We're just solving problems, so take it easy. So how do we solve this then? It's going to be 2i to the z can be written as e to the power z ln 2i. And that's equal to 4. So here's what we need to do. First of all, we're going to write 4 as an exponential too. And you can do that with e to the power ln 4, right? Can't you? Well, it's kind of like the real approach. Sorry about the motorcycle. If you can hear that noise in the background, unfortunately, the windows are open because today is a really warm day in Southern California. And anyways, so this is so real, right? We don't want to do that. We want to complexify things. So here's what, how we can do it. Four can be written as four times one, and one can be written as e to the power two pi and i. Awesome. Now, we can go ahead and natural log both sides to bring these down, right? And when we do, ln e is going to be 1, so it's going to give us z ln 2i equals ln 4 plus 2 pi and i. Now, if you compare this to the very first thing that I did, it's pretty close, right? The only thing that's missing is the 2 pi and i stuff, because that's the period for the natural log function. That is the period you need to add because what happens is you can just plot a complex number, yes. You can find the argument, yes. But if you add 2 pi to it, 
you get to the same point, but that's a different angle because you made a rotation, makes sense? So we're able to add multiples of two pi. That's why we need to talk about the smallest angle, right? Which is called the principal argument. So the smallest theta in this case, hopefully it's in the first quadrant, so it's positive, is the principal argument. And usually the distinguish between those, they use like uppercase LN and uppercase A for the argument, but I'm not sure if they are standard. Probably pretty standard, but I'm not sure if they are universal. Okay? Maybe in different parts of the universe they are using different notations. Who knows? So, here's where we are. We're going to solve for Z. So, what should we do? Divide, right? But let's go ahead and work on ln 2i first. Because what is ln 2i? Isn't it ln 2i is like from properties of logs? Isn't it ln 2 plus ln i? But then you need to talk about ln i. What is ln i, right? Okay, great. So, let's go ahead and use the definition. ln 2i is ln 2, which is the modulus of 2i. If, obviously, if you think about 2i, where is 2i? 2i is here. It's two units away from zero, so its modulus is two, and this is 2i, but that's just the length. And of course, it makes an angle of pi over two. Again, that's the principal argument, okay? So we can write this as ln two plus i times the argument, which is pi over two. But again, just like before, we're able to add multiples of 2 pi to the angle anytime some angle comes up, multiply by i, like i theta stuff, you should always consider adding 2 pi if you're not interested in the principal argument. If you are, then that's a different story. You don't need to add it. But I'm going to do it because I want to find the solution in the most general form, and then you can go to specifics. Okay? So now let's go ahead and divide by ln 2i here and here. Then z is going to be ln 4 plus 2 pi and i divided by ln 2 plus, notice that I'm dividing by that, so I'm replacing it with uh, what it is, 2 pi k. Awesome. Now, can this be simplified? Not really. Well, we can multiply the top and the bottom by 2 or even turn this into something like 2 ln 2 because it's ln 2 squared. If you multiply uh, the numerator and the denominator by 2, you get 4 ln 2 plus 4 pi n i divided by ln 2 plus i times pi plus 4 pi k. I don't, I'm not sure if that's going to be a huge improvement, but the problem with that is, I mean, I, I think I want to get back to this. So let's go ahead and replace ln 4 with 2 ln 2 here, and then kind of ignore this for now and focus on this because I want to show you something. Let's forget about this stuff, because that's not super important. Now, let's focus on this, okay? Now, notice that if we didn't have these additional pieces here and here, then we would be getting z equals 2. But obviously, that's not a solution. I'm not saying that is a solution, because even if n equals 0, k equals 0 is not going to give you that. Let me show you how. For example, if n and k are both 0, then we get the specific solution to ln 2 divided by ln 2 plus i pi over 2, which is kind of like the principal value, right? Now take a look at this. We still can't get rid of this piece here, right? That's an imaginary part or the, yes, that is the imaginary part of the denominator. It's a complex number, right? Like a plus bi. By the way, that's the name of this channel, right? Did you know that? So, but if you were able to make that disappear, z would be 2. Where does that come from? Well, let's think about the original problem. The original problem was 2i to the z equals 4. So think about it. If z is 2, 2i squared is 4i squared, right? Oops, I got stuck on highlighter. 4i squared and i squared is negative 1. Did you know that? It's negative 4. So uh, yeah, we're pretty close. We just need to multiply by negative 1. That multiplication by negative 1 is achieved by this. Make sense? So, to keep a long story short, this is the general solution. You can replace n and k with integer values. I forgot to say that, but hopefully you guessed it. Now, let's go ahead and check the result from, well, from alpha c, if it gives us something similar to this. Does it? Do you think it can do that? Let's go ahead and check it out. And this brings us to the end of this video. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then... Be safe, take care, and bye-bye.